understanding understanding the um the properties of whatever you are trading can go a very very long way understanding the market condition in which you are trading can go a very very long way and knowing that this skill you cannot um come into the market with an opinion of your own okay so say for example because you know that there is a um, dollar yen there and there is uh, probably euro yen there or there is a um, pound yen or pound dollar and this and that and just because probably all of them have yen 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 in common or dollar dollar in common um they tend to react differently and you cannot um they do not only just react differently they react differently at different times of the day okay and you need to have a kind of a way to separate the way they react all right so let's say for example let's go onto the chat for a moment so that you'll be able to see exactly what i'm saying and then I'll be able to do some teaching from there in terms of um, how you need to view the market so that you don't get confused in case you even want to look at um, multiple peers. But even out of the multiple peers, you should now be able to you should now be able to select which one is the best opportunity for me to take in that particular day or in that particular session um at the same time the other day i was discussing you want to be able to say to yourself that i want to be a day trader or i want to be a um a swing trader and you want to be able to understand how to position yourself um on whichever one that you want to you want to be and we also get to understand that okay being a day trader alone wouldn't cut it because some position might end up um, running for more than a day or two days or even a week depends on when you grab the position so the way that I say it is this, and the first thing that I'd like to let, let anyone to understand is that on any chart or on any trading day that you are venturing into, there are always two major market participants, okay? And these two major market participants, there are times in which they come into the market. And then we're going to explore that a little bit, okay? So that uh, maybe you can have a little bit of understanding of um, what I'm trying to say and how you will then be separating the information little by little. All right. When you look at this um, particular charts that I have on here. I have Aussie dollar here, okay? I have Aussie yen here. I have um, Euro Aussie here. And then at the same time, I have dollar card here. And then I have um, card yen here. And then I have um, pound Aussie here. But I want you to pay attention to one other thing. These are past um, events that has already happened, but you need to be able to understand that there are two major market participants. Mm -hmm. And the first major market participant are the people that, um, from experience, we refer to them as the middleman or the locals, mm -hmm. all right? The function of the locals is not to expand the price, okay? They cannot um, extend the range of price to um, the upside or to the downside, okay? 
they are just there to open the door for the market to start trading such that when the buyers come in, they would deposit all their orders to them. And when the sellers come in, they would deposit all their orders to them. So they will receive this order. And now it's a thing whereby they are submitting the order into a machine, but it's still the same process. When they receive this order, there's a time in which they receive this order and they start receiving this order. That will start from the pre-market session. So each and every locals that I'm talking about, they both come in in um they come in, in the Asian session, right? That is why you need to have an understanding of the um session or what session you are trading in. And then at the same time, when the session is going to an end, their own function has particularly finished for that moment. When a new session comes in, a new set of locals come in, right, to start receiving orders for that particular session, right, into their book. And then when that session ends, another set of uh, um, locals come in. So the function of the locals is for them to say that, okay, the market is open and then we will set two price for both buyers and sellers. And what that means is this, the price they sell for the buyers is the price that the buyers is willing to buy at that particular point in time, based on the orders that they received from even the end of the previous um, session. And the price that they set for the sellers is the price that the sellers is willing to accept from anybody that is um, buying from them, okay? So I want you to now note this. They have two function, like I said, they set the range of the price for the market to open, and then they receive many orders of other traders that are coming into the market as it's coming in. So when they do that, the second major player now becomes what we refer to as the other time frame um, player in the marketplace. The other time frame players are the ones that can extend the range of the market opening, right? So what they would then tend to do is because their own orders is large and this can be financial institutions, they can be the government, they can be edge funds, they can be mutual funds. I'm talking about larger players, not even you and me. You get where I'm coming from because we are just small players. They will be the one that comes into the market each and every day as part of their own um, need to conduct business. So, and everyone comes to the market at a different times, despite the fact that sometimes they do watch each other at the time when they come into the market. So let me break down that um, explanation that I've just explained that sounds a little bit daunting. Let me break it down for you on the charts. So on this chart, I want you to note that, can you see this brown horizontal line? Which one? The brown horizontal line, where my mouse is. Oh, yes. There are two of them, this one, at the top and this one at the bottom. Yes, I see that. All right, so I'm gonna blow up this and even on this chart, can you see this brown horizontal line? Yes. All right, and then can you see the brown horizontal line on this chart? Yeah, I see that. All right. So keep in mind that brown horizontal line on every chart that I've talked about. All right, so what I was using this brown horizontal line, I'm gonna expand this chart so that you can see it clearly. What I was using this brown horizontal line to do on that particular day is this. First of all, I know that the purple part of my chart is the Asian market, okay? When the Asian market comes to the end, which is gonna be at the end of this purple 
um, um, purple rectangular block. So the Asian market opened from here and then ended there. Then a new market opens, a new session opens, and that new session becomes London session. Okay, and that London session will open almost where the Asian market players open. And this is in terms of day trading perspective. So when you get into the market, for you to know potentially what we may do on that particular day, right? It is not a longer term perspective. And I believe this is the best way to actually approach the market is the first 30 minutes is this particular candle where that sell off occur. Can you see the black candle? Yes. All right. So that is the first 30 minutes of the London market or the European market open. So the sellers come in and push the price down. Okay. And then the second 30 minutes of the London market open is this particular buying that occurs after the price declines a little bit. Okay. So your range, your opening range or where the locals set the price for the sellers becomes the high of the first 30 minutes as the market open. Okay. And then the low of the first 30 minutes of the first or second 30 minutes as the market open. So basically I'm using the first hour of the market open as a gauge. And in the first hour of the market open, you don't really want to take a trade. Not that you can't, but you okay. don't really want to take a trade because what you want to use that to do is you want to use it to gauge the F on trade, the pulse, the orders of the new traders that are just joining in after one particular session has closed. You have to understand that the people in Asia the people in Europe, the people in America, everyone has got different um, ways and mode of doing things, of coming into the market. On this particular day, the Asian's mode or the Asian's trader, all they want to do is maintain a selling pressure. And they need to kind of maintain that selling pressure so that at least the market does not stock in a range and they can make profit for the day. If the market does not move either up or down, those Asian traders wouldn't really make any profit. But at the end of the day, you can see that it's the sellers that win and then um, they actually make a profit from the declining price. Forget about every other person that did not win, all right? And you can use this approach onto many other markets. So when we develop, when I develop the highs and the lows of the first 30 minutes, Everything that happens inside the highs and the lows of the first 30 minutes is showing me that the locals are the ones adjusting the price, okay? The, for me to know that the people who I need to queue behind who will extend the price either downward or upward, for me to know when they come in, I need to see the break out of the opening range okay so this is the high this is the low when this move occur that immediately alerts me that we do not only break the eye of the opening ring look at this particular move we come to the eye of the opening range but we couldn't close above it can we no we couldn't and this particular move it looks like as if we try the eye again and then we sell off all right so inside this particular range if you are taking different trades as the market opens, you will find yourself that when the price reaches this low, you might want to continue to sell because of the selling pressure that comes with it. Then the price went up, okay? But it went to the high of the range, couldn't break the range. And maybe you decide to buy, then you get frustrated because the price did not continue. And then the sell again, right? But everything is happening inside the range. So it's like, you now need to develop how to read what is going on inside the range. You need to start to understand what kind of pattern is forming inside the opening range, such that when the range have a breakout to the upside, you do not need to um, 
think twice to know that mm, this has alerted me that to the fact that the other time frame players have come in number one they are even buyers number two and they are so powerful that they are able to break out of the opening range what that suggests is all the orders that comes in have been filtered through inside this opening range and one particular order overwhelms the other and the other orders as at this London session is proceeding and the orders that overwhelm the other orders is there are more buy orders in the market okay than the sell selling pressure so the buying orders we eventually do what overwhelm the selling pressure and then the market will break out of the range and when that happens and it happens successfully it kind of give you a perspective of where you want to align your uh, loyalty for that particular day so you kind of see clearly now that mm, i'm better off being a buyer there's no two ways about it it gives you what you are looking for every day is conviction okay and conviction is which trader or which um buying or which others is dominating at the part at this particular point in time when you join the market. So what I'm actually teaching you or showing you right now is not the way that most people will use trend line or use one million and one indicator, read the markets, right? I read the markets based on understanding that um, if one orders is more than the other particular more than the other orders, definitely the price will behave and um, function in the direction of the overpowering orders. And there's a way to determine how the overpowering orders come into the market. Okay. And this is the kind of things that you learn from an advanced way of trading using the market profile. In the market profile, you'll be able to learn. Um, the functions of the locals, the functions of the other time frame. The other time frame orders is the only order that can extend the range of the opening range. Okay. And when that comes in, the range can be extended and you can have confidence to kill at the back of them. So that is exactly what you need. Where is the confidence? And how do I kill at the back of this confidence? You need to start having. Um, techniques to determine where the confidence is and how to cue at the back of the um, traders who are actually making things happen in the market. So on that particular day, the Aussie super imposed or overpowered the dollar and then the price exploded to the upside and that will keep you in perspective. And that will give you conviction to continue to buy as we continue to ride for that particular day. All right, when the US session open now, this is the range of the US session at the same time as well, the first 30 minutes, All right? And this is why I'm saying to you that each and every traders come into the market with different perspective, okay? On the London session, they play about inside the range before the, they were able to see that the buying orders um, were more than the selling orders. In the US session, that has already been settled. And it's like I say, as the US session first to 30 minutes open, the price just blow up straight forward and continue to go without looking back, okay? But the U.S. session orders is more or less like has been finalized even from the range expansion of the um, London session. And that goes on. All right. And when you look at when the Asian market opens again at this particular first 30 minutes high or low and second 30 minutes high or low inside there. All right the range extend downward and then they were able to just continue to push the price downward. All right, so there are key other little things 
that you need to understand about the opening range, which is this first two 30 minutes. The narrow it is, all right, the lesser your risk. And the narrow it is, the more easy it is um, able to be overwhelmed, all right? So you can see that this one is narrow, this one is narrow. Um, if you measure the risk over here, it's just about four pips, such that when the third 30 minutes is expanding the range, you have a four pip risk against this move that comes down like this. So you can use the initial balance of the opening range to measure your risk. That is four pip. On this particular one, the high and the low of the range is 26 pips. So your risk is different in London, uh, in US session, all right? It's about 26 pip, which you want to put below here so you can add to it, making 36 pip. Over here, you can add to it, making 14 pips. When you look at the range over here, it's about, 30 pips, so you can add 10 to it, making 40 pips for your um, for your risk. So what I'm trying to get across to you is this. The risk that occurs in each and every session is different. So you can now see from the dynamic way in which the market operates that you cannot approach every day the same. So you can come into the market having an opinion because you don't know what limitation each and every session is going to present. All right, some days it can be quite challenging. Look at this. When this London market opens, that is the eye, okay? And that is the low right you can equally see that the markets break down the first two 30 minutes to the downside and straightforward do what bounce back up inside so this day is a particularly challenging trading day and there are some ways for you to be able to understand what these are particularly challenging that will be particularly challenging when this breakout occur price is actually breaking out into what? Into a support area. Let's say, sorry, into a previous resistance forming support. So now you will be adding the things that you've already learned previously, right? Into how you want to apply the opening ring. Usually if price breaks down into a previous resistance, Obviously, which is over here, what's it going to become? It's going to become a support. So you now want to be able to filter what kind of um, open range are you going to be taking? Are you going to be taking an opening range that is going to open and then straightforward sit down on support, uh, sorry, on resistance that's now turned to support and price can change, right? Or are you, there are some days whereby you're not even supposed to take a trade at all. All right, so those days, there are ways in which you can understand them. But like I said, and like you've said as well, it is many information. It is a lot of information, right? And you won't be able to um, picture or make use of all this information if there are just so many lots of it and you can't even say that, let me make a distinction in, into which one. But the one key thing that you need to understand all the time is where is my risk? As soon as the market open, where is my risk? You know, and how do I determine my risk? And is my risk gonna be reasonable at this particular session or it's not gonna be reasonable? Is it a, a risk setup? You know, and everything depends on some days, some days, right? I shouldn't forget to mention that some days will be there whereby the other time frame players are not interested. Some sessions, sorry, will be there whereby some other time frame players are not interested. It's like they are not even there. It's like they are on the sideline. Nothing is moving. The range is not expanding or anything whatsoever. Look at this particular one as well. So 
we have the low of the London session opening range over here, and then we have the eye of the London session opening range over there, okay? And what they intend to happen is the markets break out, okay? And when the market break out, um, and you can easily consider that the other time frame, frame players comes in, okay? But where are we breaking out to? We are breaking out into a key resistance level, which has been there before. So you don't want to confuse yourself into, oh, just because we've break out, it means we're going upward. What are the other things that I've learned in the market? I know that there's a barrier over here that's preventing the market from going up. And that barrier alone is not even um, the only judgment. When the price comes back to a 200-day moving average, okay, the sellers comes back to defend their position. So that's another teaching. Are you there with me? Grace, or am I too fast? No, no. Oh, no, right. I'm understanding. All right. I understand so, the first 30 minutes or the right. first hour. And I like the 30 minute um, time frame. And I look at the hour, I look at all of them, but I do prefer the 30 minute time frame at times. All right. So, what we are actually discussing at this particular point in time is first of all, understanding the market participants what they can do and where they are acting, you know? So as the market opens, we they will set their level. There's no need to rush into it. Where is the market breaking out to? Is there an area whereby we can see rejection? The trend, right? The trend is to the downside already based on even what the 200 EME is showing me. But that doesn't mean that the price will now decide to stay below the 200 EME, it can extend above the 200 EME, which in this case is what we see, you know? And when you extend above the 200 EME, um, that still doesn't mean that we are now going up. There are many other things that need to happen before we start to go up. When we extend above the 200 EME, obviously we will form a level, and this is the level that we are forming over here. For us to go up, this level then needs to be broken, Right, and then uh, we need to see potential return back into it, and then we now see a continuation. All right, so this are uh, the other things which you probably know, and you now need to understand where do you need to apply them, right, and trying to um, mend everything together can prove a bit daunting, but by consistently forming and having a key market understanding that, how does this market actually operate? Who are making the decisions and how do they play around making decisions? It's very, very key because one missing, you can come into the market with a perfected, um, how do I call it, theory, and be like, I say, this my perfected theory is what is going to play out. Impossible. But you can come into the market to come and observe and then note what is around and what is available in the particular trading location where you are observing. And that will help you to start to appreciate and getting in sync with what the market is likely going to do. You know, it's not like I say, I do not have indicators on my charts, but I'm using those indicators to gauge the feel for the market differently. And you need to be able to be an observer before you can actually be able to execute or execute in the right um, manner at the same time as well. There are some days that will be very, very challenging and confusing. There's no doubt about it before the market moves. And there are some days whereby the markets will just open and then it will continue to drive. So each and every day, 
like I've shown you, different days over here um, and how challenging they can be. When we look at this US session, and another key thing is you need to understand the time that you are placing your trade. You cannot be placing trades, and this come with experience as well, just as one session is about to end and another one is beginning. And you will realize that majority of the losses that you encounter might be occurring during that time. And then you will ask yourself that, if I had been a little bit um, patient, this thing would have eventually go my own way because you can see how the um how the orders are flowing. Look at the eye of this um, opening range, right? And look at the lows of this opening range. Eventually, the traders that win on that particular day are the what are the sellers. But before those sellers win, all this challenge and fights of course inside the opening range and eventually the opening range breakout. And when we have that breakout, the market was able to move down 46 pip, right? And look at the challenge. The challenge inside the opening range was above 32 pips, okay? So for that particular session, what I'm bringing to your awareness or to your understanding is, that confusion that you will meet on the charts and how to separate that confusion that you're going to meet on the charts and make a, a proper um, judgment out of it. But that is what actually happened during the London, I mean, sorry, during the US session. But what happened during the US session is more or less like a continuation of the reaction that we've seen from this resistance that sell off completely um, during London um, session. And then when you have the opening ring, you can know where the manipulation is likely going to come in. But this opening ring is closer to a resistance. Let me be patient and see what will happen at the resistance. If we cannot break above the resistance and we see that the market is selling off, and there are other ways to read that one as well, the mood or what the market is playing at. If we go back to this, um, I want to show you some mood on um, on trading view. So we're looking at Australian dollar, okay? And we're looking at a 30 minute chart. which is obviously the same chart that we are looking at. And on this particular chart, if you want to base your trading based on the trend, you will know that the only direction in which you want to go is to the downside because the trend is definitely to the downside, okay? If you want to trade, uh, base your trading based on day trading, right? Then when the markets reach here, the downside playing scenario is not going to work again. Um, number one, we are far away from the moving average. So each and every time that the price is coming back to the trend line that the um, players are using to gauge their direction, you should expect also of different kind of um, overwhelming um overwhelming bounces or directional bias um, changing around the turning of the orders because look how fiercely the price move up. And then when we get above the moving averages, um, we start to make us of different kind of other decision. I'm with you. Sorry? Um, I'm with you. I'm understanding. I'm with you. Right. Um, sorry, I just got some calls coming through to my phone. Right. So what I was trying to show us, okay, let's put this session in. 
what I was trying to explain is um over here, this is also the Asian session represented by A, every single thing that happens inside there is Asian session. I can see that's a resistance area too, correct? Give me a second, please. Right. So going forward, um, the Asian session, the London session, and the US session, already an area has been formed there. And this is what I teach the other day when um, you didn't join, which was, uh, um, what was it called? Um, was it yesterday or when it was. Yeah, I was out of town on Thursday. Yeah, which is not a problem. We can repeat it. All right. When the um when that um when the initial balance of the opening forms on this particular day, which is the day that we were talking about, and it forms in this particular region and the price expanded upward, there is a way in which you can read the way the orders has been delivered, okay? And I'll go through it in a very, um, um, let's say, uh, I'll go through it in a way whereby I hope you'll be able to get it. When they order time frame players, when they break the range, okay, which is on this massive impulsive candle. The next candle is not actually a green candle or a blue candle or whatever color this is. It's not actually the bias. What happened is this is like a shock, okay? And this shock take out what was there before, which is this area of um, resistance that has been disarranged price for them um, going up even during the range that has already broken, which means we have a potential break of um, structure, right? Now I'm incorporating market structure into uh, understanding what is happening during the opening range, which I believe it's important for you to understand. And when we have that break of structure, the good entry for um, a conservative trader is to actually see price coming back into the demand zone, all right? And the demand zone on this particular day would have been this particular candle because that is when the decision was made, right? So that would have been our demand zone, all right? And we would have really want price to at least come inside this demand zone and um, and um, eat and tap into it before we have our um, before we have our position taken. One, but what you can see is um, the eye of the 
demand zone is particularly here. There's another candle which was over here as well. So if we don't grab the eye of the demand zone, at least we grab a next eye that is closer to it, which is the eye of this particular candle over here. The market almost, what is this eye? The eye is 0 0.6390, okay? And then the market make a low of uh, 0 0.63899, almost to the peep. Um, this is 90 and we dip in to 899, um, which you can see over here where it says the low, all right? So that would have been our entry incorporating um, the market structure into how we look at the opening range. And what then starts to happen from there is what I want to discuss and where you need to have patience is when this candle tap into the demand zone, we have this green candle. The next candle that follows it make a new eye. This is, um, you can see that. The next candle that follow it make a new eye, all right? The next candle that follow it make a new eye. As we are making that new eye, this is how to read the mood of the market participant now. You can see that um, we are not coming back to make the low or to take out the low of the previous candle. We haven't come back to take the low of this previous candle on this candle. Even as this market deep, we didn't take out the low of this candle. As this market deep, we didn't take out the low of this candle. So what we are in fact seeing is a very strong moving trend that you can join in on because um, the confidence at the back of the break of the initial balance or the opening range is particularly impressive. And then we've retraced now back into that place where the demand happened. Right? So there's no need to chase this because probably you can measure where your demand zone is. And if you're patient enough, which it will take another one and a half hours, that actually get um, what's it called, get tapped into. This happened say one and a half hours ago, if you miss this and you are thinking that is the end because of fear of missing out, you eventually got another opportunity, right? To come and take one of the best trade ever. And then the price starts to do what we call a one-time frame buying. What is a one-time frame buying? We keep making a new eye, right? Without taking out the low, make a new eye. We do not take out the low. So you stick with your position, make a new eye without taking out the low. You see, stick with your position, make a new eye without taking out the low, stick with the position, make a new eye without taking out the low. You see one time frame buying. That's by the fact that it looks like a silver, uh, the sellers coming over here, what happened on the next candle? See one time frame buying, one time frame buying, all right? One time frame buying, all right? So on this particular candle now, this is the first alert for us. And this is what I actually teach him on that particular day that what is my setup, right? So in looking for a setup, say for example, I've missed this train is I use a principle that I learned from one of my professor, um, Paddy Osborne, and he referred to it as STEM, all right? And we learned this in London School of Business and Finance. And STEM means S stands for setup. Okay. So it actually teaches STEM, or I develop my own way of looking at the setup. The setup is number one, a price lowing event, price lowing candle. Please bear me a second. Hi, Alan. Good. Say that again. Yeah, 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 in a way. All right, then. All right, then no problems. Um, 
give me say like within the next um half hour for five minutes or so. All right then. All right, cool, no problem. Yeah. Um, sorry about that, Grace. So a price loan candle is a price that did not make a new eye and didn't make a new low, but it actually allowed us to slow down in price that we are not doing what we were doing before. And this price loan candle occurs at the area whereby it's becoming interesting to us, okay? So when a price loan candle occurs, I am alerted to the fact that pro probably um, the trend that we are seeing is um, um, is losing steam, okay? And then what I'm looking for after a price loan candle is a trigger, and my trigger is for at least price to take out the low of the price loan candle, okay? So when the next candle occur, we realize that we continue to have what a one time frame buying, which means we move up, which means this price loan um, setup that we are seeing has now been nullified because of this move, okay? So we are not gonna do anything because the trigger, the trigger is actually, let's say the T, which is trigger is to trade below the setup candle, which is either even one pip or two pips below the setup candle, all right? So on this particular candle, this particular 30 minute auction, it's a 30 minute auction, not exactly a candle, but I mean, they call it candle, so let's refer to it a candle. Um, that setup becomes invalidated because what we've done is we've traded above the eye within trade below the low. There are some times where there are anomalies which we will get into, but I just want you to go with the flow. So what do we have here? What kind of, um, um, what kind of, um, what's it called, do we have here? Are you there with me? Yes. So what do we have here? based on what we have been explaining. This candle did not trade above the eye. It didn't trade below the low. What's actually happening here? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> what is this? All the price slowing candle. All right, so you can see that we didn't take out the eye, we didn't take out the low. The same thing that occurs over here, more or less like a price slowing candle. We didn't take out the low and we didn't take out the light eye. So what is this one? You've said it a while ago. The price slowing candle? Uh, yeah, price slowing candle. Uh, we are just repeating um, the same thing that is happening. And we are seeing this price slowing above the 200 moving average, okay? Which is more or less like the trend line that determines the trend. We've moved above it, now we start to slow down. No problems. And this candle now is a trigger candle. And what the trigger candle is supposed to do is uh, to trade below the price lowing candle. That still doesn't mean that anything has changed, but it's telling us uh, this is the low, all right? So this particular candle, trade below the price slowing candle, okay? And what that is actually telling us is, okay, now we have a trigger. The trade entry should now be a price that trade below the low of the trigger. That will be the execution, right? So our execution is a trade below the trigger, let's say it's a trade one peep or two peep below the trigger candle. That is our execution. When this particular move now occur, right? Did we trade below this candle? 
on this candle? Uh, All right, so this is our trigger candle. Let's be um, labeling it so that it becomes more easier to understand. All right, so this is a, a price slowing candle. Let's name it as PS next time. Well, we say price slowing candle. And that is PS, okay? We put that on this side and our trigger candle is a candle that trade below the low of the price loan trigger. Let's name that C, okay? That's our trigger candle. And our trigger candle becomes a trigger just because um, it was able to trade below the low of the, uh, because it was able to trade below the low of the, what was it called? Below the low of the price lowing candle. If you have any question, please do not um, hesitate. And okay. this is the I'm candle. I'm trying to get it. It's right. good. This is the candle that's supposed to become our execution candle if it trades below this low and then this becomes a failed execution candle because we expect it to trade below the low, but it failed. So when we have a failed execution candle, we start the process all over again. So then we have this particular candle. This particular candle actually trade below the low of this um, candle, okay? And now the market is switching. And I will explain that to you so that you can understand. It's a whole lot of a huge topic, but when we keep repeating it, you will keep seeing it falling into place. So from a one-time frame, market a one time frame buying that we've seen from the beginning of year let's say from this low right all the way up to this high before we have the first price lowing which is um, this particular candle what we have is a one time frame buying this is the market that you do not want to go against when you see a one time frame um, directional bias, which is the price is moving in such a manner that it is not taking out the low of the next um, candle. If you remember what I've said, that if we don't take out the low of the next candle, then what we have is a one time frame market. So we are just moving up in that 30 minute time frame. So when you get to a point whereby you start to see price doing, and then we are starting to see price moving down below the low of the price doing candle, what actually happened over there is this. There's a concept that we call auction test, okay? Auction test means We've been going in one particular direction, then we slow down a little bit, right? And the slowing down is the price slowing candle. And then the next candle that follows that slow down, which is this 30 minute auction. This is how to read the 30 minute auction. The next candle that follows the price slowing is actually going to test whether there are still more buyers in the market or not. So we refer to this trigger can do as an auction test. We are actually testing whether these buyers are still in the market when this actually occurs. So when we test the low of the price loan, we want to check whether there will still be more buyers interested, all right? So when we check if there's more buyers interested, if there's no more buyers interested, obviously the next candle will be able to open and trade below this candle low all right but if buyers are interested in the market after this auction test what we're going to see is one time frame continuation which is obviously the failed execution of a downtrend which we want to see all right so i've explained quite a lot of concepts over there and 
If you want me to repeat it, I can repeat it, right? Because I want you to take something home. I want you to actually get something that can be useful to you. So we are coming from a one time frame market all the way up here, okay? And then we reach a particular candle, which is the price slowing candle, which is this particular candle. After the price slows, it's like, Grace, we are moving in one particular direction. We are just moving or we are just driving in one particular direction and we keep driving on this motorway and suddenly we eat a traffic light, okay? That traffic light that we eat is not far from a roundabout. When we get to the traffic light, what are we going to do? We're going to slow down, isn't it? Especially if the traffic light says that if it turns red or whatever, we have to slow down, okay? When we slow down, then we're now going to be thinking of whether we want to continue when the traffic light turns green or we there's a roundabout that we need to turn around and then change direction. That type of an analogy, I don't know whether it makes sense or not, but obviously this is what is going on over here. The next thing that you actually see is this red candle. When you see this red candle that follows, it trades below the failed execution candle. So what we are actually seeing here is the market that you want to avoid, right? Because this has become a two time frame market. We are not moving in that one single um, breaking of eye, breaking of eye, breaking of eye, as we've seen over here. We, are, we start to move in a two time frame market because a two time frame market can lead to two things either continuation to the upside or uh, rejection of that particular level and then start to see a potential sell off. All right. So, in a two time frame market, you don't know what the market is going to do. We are not moving in a one time frame buyers anymore. We've, are changing course. And when you start to see the changing of course, which right. is the two time wow. frame, um, which is the two time frame selling opportunity that is going on over here. You, I mean, sorry, which is the two time frame market that is um, going on over here. You want to be careful. You want to know that, okay, I can't really do much over here. I have to see more information. And the next information, that you see after this sell-off, right? We now start to form a potential possibility for another trigger, all right? So this sell-off has occurred, which has taken out the low, is now preparing us for potential possibility that, okay, so what is happening over here? Let's see whether we're gonna have a trigger. So the next candle, we have to trade below the low. And when that next candle trade below the low, that becomes a trigger, okay? And when that becomes a trigger, you want to see your execution, which is this candle that now trade below this low. Once the execution candle occur, which is trading below this trigger low, you know that potentially you are now setting up for a trade execution. And in this case, it's gonna be a sell. If you take this trade, right? your risk will become very minimal, which is gonna be almost the eye of this candle or the eye over here. It is now um, your own um, decision to say that, I want my risk to be just because the low is over here. And the low in this case is, um, let's say the low in this case is 65.13. So, if the price trades to 65.12 or 65.11, which on this case is 65.12 or, or 65.11, then that becomes your execution. That is the price in which you want to sell. So if you sell 65.11, your stock will now become well, either the eye of, of this particular trigger candle, which is gonna be 65.20, or the most current eye that we have over here, which is 65.30 and plus maybe another five or seven or six pips, just to give you a bit of a room above here. 
if you take that trade, if you put your stop just above this eye, obviously, when this candle or call, which is under one time frame buying, okay, because we have this low and then we get to this eye, this candle actually trade above this eye, it becomes under one time frame buying. It might look a little bit confusing. And then this particular candle now, it's another key candle. It made a high and then at the same time made a new low, all right? And this is an anomaly candle. This is a candle that was set in confusion. You have to then understand all these little things. So if your stop is here, you would have been out of the market, right? If your stop is here, you will still be in the market because this has become a two-time frame market and a two-time frame market is very, very confusing you don't want to really participate in it. You want to wait for something to start changing again. All right. But if you avoid this two time frame market scenario, let's say you avoid everything that's over here because it's a two time frame, the market is not moving in one particular direction. But, or if you trade it, which can be a possibility and you have your stop above here, then Maybe you will still be in the market. If you have your stock too close, you might not be in the market anymore. Then you wait for further developments. If your stop has been triggered, then you see an anomaly candle, which is a candle that will trade above the high and trade below the low. All right. So you don't want to be on this particular candle because it's confusing. But what again is happening is you now see another work price slowing and another price slowing occurring is alerting you to a new setup. So you go back to the setup, okay? After the setup, the next thing that you're looking for okay. is a trigger, which is, yeah? Look at your dress. Thank you. The next thing that you're waiting for is a trigger. The trigger is trading below this particular price low in candle. And this is a price lowing because we do not trade above the high, we do not trade above the low. So our trigger now becomes 0 0.65717. And then the execution, right, will be trading below this particular candle, which is happening on this particular candle. So in this case now, we now have a, we now have a, a valid execution, and then we start to see one time frame selling. This is another one time frame selling. You're still in the market. We trade below the low one time frame selling. You're still in the market. Trade below the low one time frame selling. You're still in the market. Trade below the low one time frame selling. You're still in the market. Trade below the low one time frame selling. You're still in the market. All right. So this move now is another anomaly. We trade above the eye. And then we we didn't trade below the low. This is in fact there's a lot of buying pressure that comes into here based on this particular green candle. But it was overwhelmed in a way, and then we didn't break the low. But this is a one time frame buying because we trade above the high, but we didn't trade above the low. So this over here now, if you are joining the market when the price is here. It becomes a two time frame and you know that mm, let me be careful because the mode before was a selling mode and then this is alerting me to a potential possibility for a change and but if you've been in the market since this high then you can then be counting your profit if you leave your stop over here it's not such a bad thing because this is the major trend line um was equal that's determining the direction the 200 eme and then for that one time frame selling and for that one time frame selling. All right. So in this scenario that we've discussed, this has taken us into the Asian session again. And this is where the sell off occur. All right. So I can continue to go on and go on, but I think it's a lot already. And it's something that we need to recap over and over but i think this kind of um open your eyes a little bit into how the auction of the buying and selling is unfolding 
we've talked about some few things, but we haven't covered it all. But um, I want to put um, a stop to it over here because I don't want to blow your brain. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to blow your brain. But if you can find a way to practicalize um, the concepts that I've shown you, it may look like uh, another addition to every single thing that I've known, you know, but it is the effective way of reading the market auction by auction and um, every 30 minutes auction and the kind of changes that is um, occurring in every 30 minutes auction. There are more to learn, but this is just like an intro part. Okay, and the actual trade that you found based on that and being able to read it and finding comfort in reading it is just this particular trade, which is the sell off in the agent session. Um, and we were able to read a particular trade out of this as well, which is a buy opportunity that we see in Europe stroke um, US session. All right. And if you can interpret the charts like that, then you are polishing your day trading um, techniques. And this, you can apply this technique to gold indices, foreign exchange, every single thing, because everything works on this same kind of um, auction process. So you will know that when I'm seeing a two time frame market, I want to avoid when the one time frame market begins then I want to be in. It limits my risk, number one, and then it lets things kind of um, work in a way by following the setup, the trigger execution, and then the next one is the management, which I think I will teach probably tomorrow again or when next we have a meeting. So I'm going to be calling it a day at this particular point in time. And I'm glad that you're part of it. I'm glad that you are able to pick up one or two little other things separate from what you've known before and then um, is pushing you towards having an advanced knowledge of the markets and the market participant and looking at things um, just slightly differently from seeing the green candles or the red candles and not knowing the understanding of the interpretations of exactly what is going on in the market as a when it's going on because the market that you actually profit from that you can profit from is to be part of a one time frame market and what gives you the um what gives you the what gives you the confidence to stay in the market is because the one time frame market is not trading below the low of the other candle. So you can actually make a good profit out of a single trading session and don't even want to trade for the rest of the week if you've done your work correctly and you're able to time the entry in the right manner. So it's all about timing and understanding and timing it properly and being part of that market that will give you the opportunity to time it properly at the same time as well. And that's what day trading is about. It's different from investing, whereby you just take your money there and expect it to grow. Day trading is about timing and understanding how to read this timing and then flow with the timing. Okay? Yes, it's very good. I have to... Um look at it later and yeah, that, that's uh, kind fine. Of digest and formulate questions okay whenever you have any question or you have something to ask about don't hesitate to even send it to me text it to me or whatever i'll look into it i will just um, um come back to the class and re-explain i hope you have a blast and i hope i blow your brain a little bit <laughs> i didn't blow it too much no, it's good. Everything's good. I don't know how to reach you, to be honest. But Say that again. I don't know how to reach you, to be honest. Oh, on Telegram, I sent you a message. Um, you can just... um. All right, so let's do this. Let me send some few details. So um, my Telegram... Okay, I'll... Do this one second. 
I have this um, private group on Telegram. It's not for so much people because I don't want the uh, I don't want the bots to spam it. I'll send you that link. Okay, and Telegram is and um I have a private mentoring group as well. I'll send you that link. That's two. You can join into that and um my personal state. Let's 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 see. Uh, you can reach me on Telegram on this one. Um, that's my Telegram um, private um, number. And then also, let's see what have I got here. Um, I have... Um, my YouTube um, channel. Over here. Uh, you can follow me on Telegram. Again, like that. Yeah. I think um, if you just copy all that, then it should be a lot easier for you to gain contact with me directly if you have any question. If I did not answer immediately, definitely. Oh, yeah, you've joined the group. So that's fantastic. No problems. So we can keep it small like that and take it from there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I joined the groups that you mentioned and I took no. your information. All right, then. Um, I think you I gave your yeah. Gabby, obviously, but I'll continue with my day as well, and then we'll take it from there. I'm yeah. going to sleep, yeah. Yeah, I'm you so need it. <laughs> well, I wasn't feeling so great, so. Okay. Um, but I'm good. I, um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, when are you, what time do you normally come on, or? Um... <laughs> Like I'll probably come on much later on if I don't have um if I'm a bit bored and I feel like um but I'll try and come on tomorrow again. Oh okay, but like not at this time, cause right or yeah, do, I mean if you can catch this time, you catch another time. So some people can catch certain times, some people can catch another time. It's yeah. uh, I just happen to be up. Normally I sleep. Uh, yeah, and in Saturn. <laughs> I know. We are operating it. it's a different time zone. But I'll I will launch this on the um I Kwaku I Damien Scott. You lot, I don't know when you join, maybe you're just joining. I'm just about to call it a day. Uh, oh. <laughs> we I will come back later on. I think I've sent the message since um 8 55 and we've yeah, been on so since somebody, around yeah. that time. So but don't worry. I'll come back later on. I'll try and launch this on um, YouTube as well. We went through some details, continuing from what we were doing again the other day. Kwaku, I think you were part of it. So but we went through yeah, sure. some more in-depth details again today. So it will be on YouTube. And if I am able to do another session later on or tomorrow, I will still recap on it so that um, you can um, be part of it. But mm -hmm. I really do appreciate you sparing a little bit of the time to be part of it as well. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And for Grace, you have a good day in yes, the US. Have a good um, night at the same time as well. So guys, thank you. I'm gonna- um, Before you, you go, um, go on. Yeah, you know, the, the, your, the recordings, where, where do you put them so that um, one can go through them? Please. The recordings. Um, I yeah. think if you look on the charts, I haven't up uploaded um, the last couple of few days, but I'll try and do that. Um, sorry, one second. I'll try and do that um, um, today. I put some 
details here, my YouTube channel, that is it. That's where it's going to be. And then when I do upload, um, you should be able to see it there. I have a um, backlog of uploads that I need to do that I haven't been able to do, but I'll do that anyway so that you can catch up with it. Okay, that's fine. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. No worries. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.